Now that Helen is not there, don't feel lonely. Helen has shown you the way. Maybe it is true God is grace. That's why he granted you this opportunity to come. As our elder Joshua said, so that you can come and put that shoes that Helena had already put on. I'm requesting you to follow the footsteps of Helen. Helen was hard working. When she came here, she remembered where she came, she came from and she was very quick to bring you here. You know the dreams she had for you. Until the last day, Helen called you and asked you how far you with your process of joining uh, classes. I want to pray for you that you achieve these dreams because this is the only legacy you can give to your sister. The parents back home, it's, it's really sad that you are going to bury your daughter whom you had much expect ex expectation from her. I'm praying for you. It's really hard for a parent to bury the daughter of the son. It should, it should not be like that. No parent will wish to bury their own kids. It should be the other way. Though there is no death that is good, but for sure, even me, I will not like my son or my daughter to bury me. My wish is my daughter or my son to bury me. It's really sad. Let's pray for the family mem members back home, the friends who are here in Canada. Please, let's support Enoch. He's a young boy. He's just 21 years old. He needs a lot of guidance. He needs a lot of support. And being a newcomer, he knew Helen as her sister. Right now, he may think he's alone. We may promise, and many people give promises, but it's few people who can fulfill those promises. I don't want to promise that Enoch, I will be on your side all the time. But please, I'm calling good friends. If there's any way you can advise Enoch, please do it. If there's any way you can support him to achieve our dreams, and more especially, I want the young man to go to school. That's my dream, and that's what, that was the dream of Helen. Please, let's help him. He's a newcomer. Maybe he doesn't know the procedure. Reach out and uh, guide him. Finally, it is sad to think that we will not have Helen anymore in our house. We have been sharing good times with Helen at our, at our home. I've been working with Helen. It's Helen who made me to join PSW. It's Helen who encouraged me to drop what I was doing to go and work with her. We bought the car together. I, I usually imagine since this incident happened, I've, I don't have even the, I don't have even that, that I don't know, because when I think how we used to be close to Helen, it's really sad. From here, driving from Toronto to Collingwood, for me, it was like a minute, because Helen is a jovial girl. She will give me all stories. She will talk to me all the way from Toronto to Collingwood. Now, when I think I'm going to drive that car alone, it creates bad memory in me. When we are in the house, me and Enoch, Helen will wake up in the morning, and they will say, Mimi siwezi pikia wanaume wawili wa melala. Ibumu wa mkeni tupike chai. Now it's really sad when we think, me and Enoch, like how are we going to start waking up and doing this stuff without Helen? Helen was good to us. And we believe, because I'm a Christian, I believe there is life after death. And because I believe God died on the cross, and paid our sins, I believe one day, as a Christian, we will meet and have a few chats with Helen. I will miss you, Helen. Even as you sleep, I won't say I love you. I will miss you dearly. I want sincerely, I want to take this opportunity to 
thank the friends, the Kenyan community, the Canadian commu the community, who have shown much love to us, and they have stood with us. When this incident happened, I was at Collingwood, and I was called. I didn't know where to start from. But through friends and through the grace of God, we are here today. We are not strong to stand before you, but it is because of the support, because of the love that we, you have shown to us, that's why we are standing here. We are not happy. We are sad. But you supported us. You came at home. You, gave us, you visited us at home, and you really encouraged us. Please, I'm told it's not good to say thank you and name few people. But please, I'm not, I'm not doing this because I don't know how many people helped us all. I don't know how to put it, but I'm told it's not good. To Good afternoon, everyone. Um, the brother to the late Helen. First and foremost, I want to thank everyone for being here today to help me say goodbye to my late sister Helen. She was always a constant guiding light in my life, and I always looked up to her. It's so sad and unfair that a woman with so much talent and so much integrity, a woman who had so much to give, has been spirited away from us way too young. I'll give my best to try to honor the beautiful, kind, loving, and kind woman that my gorgeous sister was. While Helen will no longer be with us in person here today, her memories will always will. Helen was born on 4th December 1998 in Bomachoge, Kisi County, Kenya. She was born to Nyabuto John Kiondi and Alice Karo. Helen was the eldest among the six siblings and she was a sister to Riziki, Winnie, Abraham, Rebecca, and I. Helen was a unique character in many ways. She, she always never forgot where she came from. She attended Nyambuno Academy since the year 2003 to the year 2013. She was always a bubbly person and she ended earning up a nickname, Smiling Machine. And in 2014, she joined Ethereum Girls High School, where she eventually graduated in 2017. Helen loved sports and she loved playing soccer. She captained the soccer team to the national labels. And when she finished high school in 2017, she had a dream of wanting to pursue and further her studies abroad. And in 2019, when she got a chance to travel to Canada, when she arrived, she enrolled at Peay College in 2019 to pursue a diploma as a personal support worker. And after graduating, she, she secured employment at Erirang Nursing Home where she worked since September 2020 to July 2022. Helen passionately worked with seniors and she was a hardworking lady and she loved what she did. While she was working, she was taking up grading classes at Sheridan College which could enable her to join nursing school. She, she also worked at Chatsworth Home Care from August 2022 until she met a sudden death on 18 August 
2022.